Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna show you how to build out a nav bar that drops down on scroll in Webflow. Here we go. Okay, so let's hop into Webflow and take a look at what we're building today. So specifically what we're building is this nav bar animation right here. So you can see we have a nav bar that is just at the top of our page, but when we scroll and that disappears, another one drops down. Here's another example right here. We have a normal nav bar with our links all at the top of the page. And as we scroll and that disappears, our new nav bar pops down just like so and stays fixed at the top of the page as we scroll until we go back up and it disappears and our original transparent menu is back. So that's what we're gonna build today. It's not gonna take long. Firstly, we're gonna build out our nav bars. Then I'm gonna show you the key to the entire thing, a little trick I learned along the way a couple years ago. And then thirdly, we're going to add interactions to get this little drop down animation. So without further ado, here we go. All right, so let's come into Webflow here and get started. So all I've done is I've dropped in a default nav bar from the Command K menu. I've added in a logo um, just so it looks kind of cool. And then I've given our nav bar a class called nav bar playground, our container a class and our nav links classes. I've also set the background for our nav bar as transparent, okay? That's all I've done so far. So what do we do next? We're going to take our first nav bar and I'm going to copy it and then paste a second one right underneath it. I'm going to give this second nav bar a combo class, uh, nav bar playground fixed, okay? I'm going to give our second nav bar a background just so we can distinguish which nav bar is which. I'm just gonna make it white. Okay, so our first nav bar is up here, our second nav bar is right here. Now, as you can see, our first nav bar is going to be this one that shows up when we haven't started scrolling. And this nav bar is actually going to disappear as we scroll up the page. So if we come back here to our first nav bar, we wanna make sure that this is just positioned relatively. So make sure that your nav bar is positioned re relatively. It should already be if you dropped in the default nav bar from Webflow. Now, what we wanna do on our second nav bar is we wanna actually fix it to the top of our page. This way that when we scroll, no matter where we are on the page, up or down, that nav bar will be fixed to the top no matter what. So we want it there at all times. So we're gonna select our second nav bar and we're just gonna position it as fixed and we're gonna position it at the top of the page. So you can see now we're actually covering up our first nav bar. This is okay um, because the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to hide our second nav bar, okay? So with our second nav bar selected, we're just gonna come up here and hide it, all right? So here's our initial nav bar again, um, only being shown because we've hidden our second nav bar. So that's step one. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna actually set up the interaction that drops the second nav bar onto the page like this once we hit a certain point on the page. So this nice smooth drop down animation is what we wanna do next. The problem is we have to do one step before this and this is the key to the whole thing. This is the little trick that I learned a couple years back. What we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to come to our body and we're gonna to wanna to add a section. I'm gonna give it a class and it's just gonna be called uh, Fixed Page Trigger. And I'm going to want to position this absolutely inside of our body, top, okay? And then I wanna give this top margin here. I wanna set this as 110 VH. So that fixed, you can see that fixed page trigger section, you can see it outlined right here, is 110 VH off the top of our body, okay? Now, why do we wanna do this? Well, this section is going to serve as our interaction trigger. What does this mean? Well, let's go back to our examples. As you can see, our interaction, our second nav bar does not drop into the screen, onto the page, until we scroll past our initial menu. 
if we didn't have this little offset, if we didn't have this 110 VH, then the second we scrolled right there, our nav bar would drop down and we wouldn't be able to see our first nav bar. So it wouldn't look good. We want that delay, we want that offset so that our second nav bar doesn't drop in until our first nav bar is completely off the page. That way, it's just nice looking, it's clean looking. So again, add in basically a dummy section, position it absolutely to the top of the body, and then give yourself a margin of 110 VH. Again, that 10 VH right there gives us that little buffer that we're gonna, that we're gonna use. So that's step two. Now, let's get into step three and build out our actual interaction. So what we're going to do is with our fixed page trigger section selected, we're gonna come up to interactions and I'm gonna add an element trigger here and I'm gonna choose scroll into view. Remember, when our fixed page trigger scrolls into view, then we trigger our drop down animation. So scroll into view. I'm going to start an animation and add a new one. I'm gonna call it uh, navbar sticky scroll playground. All right. And then I'm going to add a, firstly, a hide show. Remember, our second nav bar right now is hidden. We need it to reappear. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna double click here, change target to nav bar playground. And I'm going to set it as initial state, hidden. And then I'm gonna add another one here at the end, hide show, double click, change my target to the second nav bar again. I'm going to delay it uh, maybe maybe 0.5 seconds. And then I'm going to uh, add its display so it's not hidden. So I'll just click this uh, block element display right there, okay? So basically, it'll start out hidden, and then once we scroll into view, after half a second, it will show the nav bar, the second nav bar just like that. All right, so there's our hide show interaction, but we don't want our nav bar to just appear randomly. We want this nice little drop down. You can see it just kind of slides down from the top. So how do we do that? Well, we do it basically the same way. So we'll just add in a move transform here. Double click, change our target to the second nav bar, the one that we want to slide in. Uh, set as initial state is checked, good. And then we'll just change our Y value axis to negative 50, uh, maybe negative, uh, negative 100 pixels, all right? And then we'll come right here um, to the same time as our hide show, and we'll go move. Same thing, double click, change the target to our second nav bar again. And we will set our Y to zero pixels. So what is this doing? Again, we'll, at the initial state when we page load, our second nav bar will be 100 pixels above the screen. We won't see it, but once we hit this fixed page trigger, after half a second, our nav bar, second nav bar, will move from 100 pixels up back into place at zero pixels. So let's see how that looks. All right, so here's our nav bar one, transparent, good. And then as I scroll and I hit that page trigger, boom, it slides right into place just like that. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Now we can play with this. We can come in here, we can speed up, um, like our easing if we wanted to, we could like come in here and do like an in cubic easing, or we can cut down our duration to like 0.25 if we wanna speed things up a little bit, and things like that, like we can play with it. Um, but the idea is right there, the idea is the same. Now, as you can see, the problem we're having here is, all right, now it's, it's moving, it's coming a little faster, which is nicer. The problem here is though, we need to create an out animation or an out interaction, because when I scroll up, this this second nav bar doesn't slide back up in a way it just sit, it just sticks there so how do we do that well we'll save our first interaction and then we'll come down here to wind scrolled out of view we'll basically do the same thing so we'll start a new animation uh, we'll call this one nav bar sticky scroll out playground 
All right, so we're gonna do the same thing here. We're going to add a move transform, double click, change the target to our second nav bar. And we're going to set this back up to 100 pixels, negative 100 pixels, sorry, back up and away off the top of the screen. And then we're going to add in a same thing just for consistency, a hide show. We're going to delay this 0.25 seconds and then we're gonna hide it. Um, this way, we, we put that delay in just so that it, it, it completes this move up and away before we hide it completely. Okay, so again, what this is saying is when this fixed page trigger scrolls out of view, then we move our nav bar back up, basically scrolls out, and we hide it away again. So let's see how it looks. So we scroll down and it pops down. I can smooth that out a little bit if I need. And then I scroll up and it disappears just in time for our menu to show back up. Again, I can come in here, I can change this around as I need. So I can come in here and I can change the easing. I can, you know, do all sorts of cool stuff to make it look a little smoother and things like that. But that's the basic premise. So again, this is it guys. As we scroll down the page and we hit that fixed section, that trigger section, that's 110 VH off the top of our page. This second nav bar slides down. You can style this nav bar as you need. You can have these links linked to different pages and tabs on your website, whatever you need to do. Then as you scroll up and that fixed page trigger, that's 110 VH off the top of our page, scrolls out of view, our second nav bar slides back up, disappears, and our initial nav bar reappears uh, relatively positioned at the top of our page. And again, you can style this as you need. So anyways, that's it guys. That's how you build a sliding nav bar on scroll in Webflow. I really like using this. I really use it on all my sites. Um, I think it's very professional, very clean, and just add something to the site. So if you like what you saw, go ahead and throw this on your website and, and see if it works for you. Anyways, thank you guys so much for being here. If you're still here, go and smash that like button for me. I really appreciate it, it really helps me out. If you wanna see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing, I also appreciate that. If you have any questions on anything I did, in this video or in past videos or any other random questions, go down in the comments below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again, guys, for being here. I really appreciate it. I will see you all on the next video. Peace.